Good morning, Barry Bryson again, thanking you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. We're continuing our study of the life and letters of the Apostle Peter, and we're beginning in 1 Peter chapter 2 today, and we're going to read um, through verse 10. Um, okay, let's go ahead and, and read the, the text as we begin today. Therefore, putting aside all malice and all guile, falsehood, hypocrisy, and envy and slander, like newborn babes long for the pure milk of the word, that by it you may grow in respect to salvation, if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. And coming to him as to a living stone rejected by men, but choice and precious in the sight of God, you also as living stones are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices accepted to God through Jesus Christ. For this is contained in Scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone, a precious cornerstone, and he who believes in him shall not be disappointed. The precious va value, then, is for you who believe, but for those who disbelieve, the stone which the builders rejected. This became the very cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. For they stumble because they are disobedient to the word, and to this they were also appointed. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of God's own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For you once were not a people, but now are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Paul, I mean, Peter here is, 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 uh, is just, it's just pointing us back to things. Paul has written to what he himself with his own ears heard Jesus say and what is written in the prophets Isaiah and Hosea. So, uh, it, you know, the, the therefore is connecting this to what we just read in chapter one, that because we're in this historic moment, we've got to get ready to be the people we need to be, which is how this, these 10 verses in, reminding us of who we are. Um, that means that we're not ready to fight. We're ready to obey. We're ready to suffer. We're ready to stand our ground without hitting back and without giving in because that's exactly what Jesus did for us. Um, so he, he talks about uh, um, how, what we have to empty ourselves of if we're going to do this, if we're going to get our head in gear and, 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 and be ready for what's about to come. We have to put aside bad feelings, you know, uh, uh, for each other, malice towards each other, falsehood, hypocrisy, envy, and slander. We've got to live truthful, honest, genuine lives. If this is going to happen at all, if we're going to endure this, and instead of calling us to be grown-ups <laughs> and to be men, a men of valor, he tells us to be newborn babes, to long for the pure milk of the word. It is the word itself that's going to see us through. That's another thing that he's going to repeat throughout that. And, and, and comparing uh, uh, Christians to babies and, and, and milk uh, and growing on the milk of the word, he's pulling on an image that Paul has used in the Corinthian correspondence. Um, and then he goes to that image that he heard Jesus himself use in Matthew chapter 21, the stone, the stone that is the cornerstone that the builders reject, that is a prophecy of Jesus Christ, also uh, from, from, from the prophet Isaiah. And, um, and uh, um, um, anyway, um, he, he involves, includes other, other passages that talk about the stone, and he says we're also stones. Jesus is the cornerstone, but we're the living stones upon which everything else is built. Jesus is going to use us as the bricks to build his temple. We're not only bricks of the temple, but we're the priests of the temple. In the same way, Jesus is the lamb and the high priest. We are the priests in service and the temple itself. Also an image that Paul uses in the Corinthian correspondence, that we are the temple of God. We individually, our bodies, and we, the church, are the temple of God, 1 Corinthians 3, 1 Corinthians 6. Um, and, and, and then he reminds us, going back to Hosea, you know, and, and the rejection of his wife, and then the bringing back of his wife, 
and and the whole the whole connecting us to God that God has claimed us in that we're special. You're a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a people of God's own possession. And the reason for this is so that we can demonstrate how excellent God is and we can shine his marvelous light. And if we're going to be that, we have to remember now we are special because we have received mercy, because God has given us grace. These are going to have um, clear implications in, 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 in terms of the way we, we live our lives. They're going to make claims on us about how we live our lives, which he'll begin talking about in verse 11 tomorrow. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word.